Hello and welcome to PredictoCast, the podcast where we predict the plot of a movie we know nothing about. It's Thanksgiving week. Uh, I'm Josh, and with me as always is Skinner. Hey, Skinner. Hi, how you doing, Josh? I'm doing well. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving is this coming Thursday. And, of course, we are uh, not alone on this episode, as we mentioned on our mini-episode last week. We are joined by friend of the show and good friend of ours in real life who when you hear this episode drop on the Monday before Thanksgiving will be seeing in person in only <laughs> two or three short days it's Bo North hi Bo hi 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 Skinner thank you for having me on the show again love coming back on predicto cast we're so happy to have you by the way I'm here too <laughs> Oh, yes, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, the regular Skinner is also here, but his lovely wife, Jody is joining us for this episode um, because he forced her to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I refuse to be in the kitchen on Thanksgiving, so. <laughs> Good for you, honey. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, two guests this week. It's very exciting. We are talking about a family Thanksgiving <laughs> uh, from 2010, I believe, and uh, we picked this movie, I think, primarily because of Faye Dunaway and her great hat on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> and the wig, Ace's wig. <laughs> um, before we get into it, then I think we should just uh, kind of go around and and get your sort of initial impressions. So, uh, Bo, we'll start with you. What were your initial impressions of this one? Well, first of all, I am shocked that this was from 2010 because you really can't tell the difference in Hallmark movies. <laughs> no. Like, uh, uh, I really thought that that was this. It was like a new, like holiday movie that they were doing. I was like, oh, they're finally doing some Thanksgiving stuff. That's cool. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> color me surprised that I just now learned that this is from 2010. But, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It wasn't as bad <laughs> as some of the Hallmark stuff I've seen. I'm not going to say it's great, but it was fine. You know, it was a, definitely a gender-swapped version of that Nicolas Cage movie, The Family Man. Yes. Uh, that, which I saw is... in the theater. <laughs> Never yeah. getting over that. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. It was. It had, you know, peaks and valleys. Yeah, as they all do. Uh, Jody, what, what did you think? Well, I didn't know anything about it um, until I, I read the description right before we launched it. And it said something like a, a woman is throwing a birthday party for her stepson when a mysterious <laughs> woman appears. Um, so it's kind of misleading. <laughs> yeah, that's very misleading. I don't I think that's, for that that's about it the all. entire movie. It, yeah, they're just stepson. <laughs> I mean, if, if, really, is, is a stepson any different than a child who will never be born? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what we're supposed to take from that ending. Like, I I fully expected this to go the the kind of groan inducing route of oh she's going to stay in this fantasy world. But they actually you know followed through and they're like, well, those people aren't real. This is all a fantasy. You have to go back to your real life. But like, you know, obviously they imply that she's going to get together with that guy. Are they going to mm. produce exactly the same children, or is something going to be different about them? <laughs> She'll always wonder. I yeah, mean, like here's the thing: that at her age, she's not. She one. How did she have a three year old in the first place? <laughs> um, not to be mean, but like that's weird. Um, <laughs> two. I think the moment of 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 chance for seed and purchase have passed for those children to ever exist <laughs> unless I, amy's born potty trained that would be nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> amy is the star of this movie by the way oh, oh yes without a doubt i i mean amy saved this whole thing from just being total pap amy is so good that she's making me consider watching jingle all the way to with larry the cable guy because she's i think playing his <laughs> daughter in that movie Oh, my devotion does not go that far. <laughs> no, I won't do it, but I'm just saying it's it crossed my mind. <laughs> I'm shocked you haven't watched it already, honestly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have such a fondness for the for the original that it's kind of 
it's a it's a big step down from from Arnold Schwarzenegger to Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> this seems like a good opportunity for you to quote the original movie. Can you do that for us, Josh? <laughs> wow, you're putting me on the spot. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Jamie, I got you a Turbo Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's Aaron's catchphrase. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, this is her first movie, by the way, which you couldn't tell. She was a pretty good little kid actress. I think what yeah. made her work is that she was almost like not an actress. She, you never see a kid squirm so accurately like a three like she's an actual three-year-old and like everything she does as far as like yelling and squirming and putting her arms up and like the faces she makes that's just a three-year-old <laughs> yeah yeah she that she did feel very authentic in the role <laughs> the uh hold my gummies please was oh yes. an excellent moment uh <laughs> yes. definitely a high point for me yeah, when when her mom is um when Claudia is very angry and and uh saying like what the hell and they the kids are freaking out cuz she's swearing and uh and she's like well when I find Gina you're going to learn a whole lot of new swear words and they're like yay. <laughs> uh so let's yeah, let's go through this um plot such as it were. Uh I did not know the <laughs> family man plot. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know the family man. I I had heard of it obviously, but I didn't know what it was about. So I did see that bit of trivia on IMDb, um, and I mean, does it? Com- I guess like Bo, does it compare at all? Like, is it pretty much exactly the same? But just fl- I mean, like, yeah, is there it's... a weird woman with a with a hat and a wig who sends Nicolas Cage into an alternate reality? No, that part I don't remember <laughs> uh, happening at all. I think that was <laughs> just a fun little bonus for this. But otherwise, it hits all the same beats. Oh, I think that happened to Nick Cage in real life. <laughs> <laughs> does it Does it also take place at Thanksgiving? Uh, I do think it. I think it does. It um, should. It's Honestly. around the holidays, I think. Yeah. Actually, I'm I think it takes place it starts on Christmas, on Christmas Day. The the weirdest thing is that this movie is called A Family Thanksgiving, yet we mm-hmm. do we see the Thanksgiving meal? No. We the birthday. We just <laughs> yeah, see, we the, see pageant. the birthday. Yes. <laughs> like they don't even have the Thanksgiving meal, which is very funny to me. That like they put I mean, such we see emphasis the turkey. on it. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that is true. They do uh they do have that one scene. That's right. But it's it's yeah. very low key compared to what the uh when she's talking to her sister and she's like, I gotta prepare a meal for twenty people and then like when they actually cut to the one they have, it's like four people there. Yeah. And that's a tiny little bird. Um, so yeah, so when we meet uh Daphne Zaniga as Claudia, she is this no nonsense lawyer. Um, and she's, we, we meet her in the morning as she's like working out, but making all these notes about what she needs to do for the day. And like, um, you know, all these meetings that she has to do and how like this has to be taken care of and that has to be taken care of. So she's very focused and she's career minded. She has no, um, no time for anything else. She won't even give a a nice man at the coffee shop the time of day. (laughs) I mean, she went to Harvard Oh, that's she can't, true. You can't expect her to, you know, talk to the plebs. She went to Harvard. <laughs> she won't Harvard even talk. To, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she won't even talk to this nice uh, fake Henry Cavill looking guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he acts maybe a little bit better than Henry Cavill, but <laughs> But this is this is weird cuz Skinner and I um we, we covered a few weeks back Pumpkin Pie Wars with uh, our friend Sammy C, who will also be with us at Thanksgiving. And uh, that guy was also kind of a l- low-budget Superman-y t- sort of type of character. <laughs> I described him as being between the Superman and Lois CW guy and a Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard Superman. He was like right in the okay. square in the middle. This guy <laughs> looks definitely more <laughs> like uh, Henry Cavill. And, and he is a better actor than the guy in the previous movie. In fact, everybody in this movie is a better actor than than the people in the previous movie we watched this month. 
That doesn't say very much for the movie you just watched. <laughs> no, it does not. Um, I'm not saying that Superman knockoff is my type, but I did happen to notice that his left eye had two tone color. Oh, he's a, he's a David Bowie. <laughs> um, so she also berates the the coffee shop guy for not being open right away when she gets there. Um, which is, uh, you know, it just it's it's going a long way to set up how you know mean she is and how much she needs a, some sort of change in her life. Um, this is where we first, I think, this is where we first meet Faye Dunaway uh, as Gina. Yeah. She's there, and she, I think, she sees her. Does she talk to her? I can't remember if she actually talks to her in this scene or not. No, she just sort of like looks at the guy and sort of waves at him. Oh, but she doesn't. She doesn't talk to to her, no. And uh, she, you know, she's, it's weird because like, it seems like she's friends with the, with the security guy, Al, at, at her, Mm. at her office because apparently, uh, yeah, apparently at some point she has bought him a donut because she has a usual order at this coffee shop and she says, oh no, not the, not the donut today, a bran muffin. So she's <laughs> she's nice enough to get this guy sweet treats on occasion, but also now is making uh, judgments on his health and saying you need to eat a bran muffin instead. <laughs> she also accused him of being lazy, being asleep at his desk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're just Which, yeah. They're setting setting her up to make you hate her. One of two black characters in this whole movie. Not a great look. <laughs> No. Yeah, I don't know if they're friends so much as she needs people to dominate. Mm. Well, yes, Good fair. Good point. Um, and, uh, you know, she she goes in and gives him this thing, and he's like, hey, where's my donut? Um, but she also is supposed to be meeting with the, with the partners at her law firm. She thinks that this is the chance that she might, uh, you know, finally get to be made partner, and this is obviously very important to her. She talks to her, her sister. Um, what is her sister's name? Is it gin? I want to like say gin, this? like gin blossoms. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jen. Jen. Oh, it's Mississippi yeah, like up in Jennifer. here. I got a pan. Hey, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bo, let's make fun of his, his accent a lot. Let's not do <laughs> like that. I'm on this <laughs> <episode>. <laughs> like I'm anyone. Episode. Like I'm in any position to make fun of the way someone talks. I know, but it's so much fun. No, <laughs> it's it funny vowel sounds. No, I can't. No, I can't. Uh, I I can't be there to defend myself. You could do it in person, uh, but not on the show. Okay, um, well, Jin here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. They uh, so, they, anyway. they do roughly look like sisters. Yes, they do. They do a good good job of casting there. Um, but she, you know, is also very mean to her sister, where she's you know. Uh, basically telling her that even though she has to deal with a baby, she doesn't work. <laughs> she has yeah. no, nothing to do. Well, since you're home all day. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really going anything. out of their way. <laughs> and Daphne, Daphne does a lot of these characters. Like I would say her character as the princess in Spaceballs was kind of type A, <laughs> mm. kind of kind of bossy. <laughs> yeah. um, one of my favorite movies that she's in is called The Sure Thing. Uh, with John Cusack, and again, she's extremely uptight in that movie from the '80s. I'm <laughs> dating myself, but uh, this is this is some well-worn uh, steps here. And speaking of baseball, I really like that robot that turns into the giant maid that sucks the atmosphere up in a <laughs> giant vacuum. <laughs> I could really use that in this movie. <laughs> uh, this is when I think this is around the time where she actually meets Gina for the first time. And again, it might seem like I'm going fast, but this is literally like the first five minutes of the movie. There's so yeah. much stuff happening very quickly that it's really hard to keep up with everything. Like I was trying to make notes of like little details, but they were just happening so quickly that I could not keep up. It's funny that this movie it introduced both uh, Claudia and Bill uh, alternate reality Bill in a way that tells you, by the way, hate this person. <laughs> They're going to be the people you're going to be rooting for. But by the way, we're going to set a lot a lot of quick moments here, really establishing <laughs> that you're going to dislike these two. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I really did not care for Bill at all. I Why are we supposed to like Bill after that introduction? He's so boring. Did they ever explain why he was a dick to her when he when she first meets him in the alternate in the uh They the have an argument take? about something, but we don't know what that argument is about. Because she's has her period, Josh. You're single, you don't understand. <laughs> She has her period. It's I 2010, th- Josh. I mean, it's Hallmark. We're all stereotypes. I Hallmark. This is Hallmark 2010. Brand muffins are funny. Women <laughs> having their time of the month. We've all been there, my friend. <laughs> I thought that's, that's what a it was. Trope. I thought a Hallmark I, trope. Oh, it's a man trope. It's a man trope. I'm sorry. <laughs> Slide let's, and divide, my friend. Let's fight on air. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't positive that that's what was happening like i thought that's what the implication was but what what did he say oh i i i was so busy laughing when he came home and like because i i I turned to jody and said i hope uh uh alternate reality dad he doesn't come home horny and then he does (laughs) oh my (laughs) god consent bro have we heard of it but like i i yeah, they they did. They obviously don't say what the argument is about, but like, I don't. Th- I mean, they don't. They don't bother even telling us what he does for a living. I don't think I know what he does he works for a at living. The company. He <laughs> the does company the, with the senior management. <laughs> yeah, but position. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they they don't even bother telling us where he works. So of course they're not going to tell us why they had a fight in the morning. Um. <laughs> She she meets Gina here, and Gina reveals that she is her transpersonal psychologist. Is this really the best title that they could come up with? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't either, but it feels offensive. I'm looking it up. Actually, tr- okay, so transpersonal psychology is a thing. It is a field or school of thought in psychology centered on the spiritual aspects of human life. Hmm. <laughs> so, sounds like something a, comp- a a law firm would definitely invest in. <laughs> yeah, well, I, her 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 card was hysterical. I mean, I think it was the size of an huge. index card. <laughs> and then her hat. I mean, you obviously know she's a transpersonal psychologist, which you've never heard of before. It's so obvious with that hat. I, you know, I was kind of waiting for. Uh, to be like um, Beauty and the Beast, where the rose petals <laughs> fall off the flower because the time is going down. I thought feathers were going to fall off her hat. And when she had like one left, we knew. I thought maybe like an <laughs> evil magician would knock off her hat and she turned back into a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Thanksgiving thing, so she would turn back into like a turkey or something. Right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she she tries to tell her that they need to talk and that she was set up by the company. And of course, Claudia is not interested in that. She kind of shoes her off and goes to her meeting with the partners with uh, Jim, uh, her the, the the one of the main partners at the, the president of Green Screen Department. <laughs> John Skinton <laughs> yes. is his name. John. Oh, that's it. John Skinton. That's right. Not Jim. Uh, he has a voice that sounds like it has been dubbed. <laughs> yep. He uh, he's got an evil haircut. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's clearly like the Mister Burns stand-in. He looks like Chris Cooper in the Muppet movie, where he plays the evil guy, does uh, the evil laugh by just saying it out loud. Oh, I didn't even laugh. know Chris Cooper was in the Muppet movie. No, he's I need in a Muppet it. movie. You should go oh. see that. We should cover more Muppet movies, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy apparently hasn't done, uh, he's done some acting, but I think he's best. Uh, this is uh, Neil, what is his name here? Neil Fernley. And Good name. he's he's mm. primarily a, uh, he only has like 16 acting credits, um, but he's primarily a, a, a director. So he's directed a lot of uh, episodes of When Calls the Heart. Oh um, my god. <laughs> <laughs> as well as 26 episodes of RL Stein's The Haunting Hour. Um he oh, he directed this movie. Okay, uh, let me ask you something. Is he Canadian? Probably. He, he sounded <laughs> Canadian to to me. And Daphne is is an executive producer, I saw. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So he also directed uh some of the Witchblade TV series. <laughs> Um, oh, then he's definitely Canadian. <laughs> directed some of the the Outer Limits series from the nineties. Oh, then he's super Canadian. He's gonna get the, <laughs> he's gonna get the order of the of the Governor General with this. 
<laughs> directed some episodes of the superhero show from the 90s, Mantis, which is oh pretty exciting. Oh, my God, Mantis. <laughs> um, Ooh, Stargate Atlantis. That also rhymes with Mantis. Some, some episodes of 21 <laughs> Jump Street, some episodes of Friday the 13th, the series, also and Canadian. a show that I am incredibly fascinated by called Garage Sale Mysteries. <laughs> Which is kind of what the green screen looked like. <laughs> <laughs> it's Garage Sale Mysteries uh, is is a TV series. For, uh, I guess it's like a TV movie series. Hard to say, but um, uh, Jen is an amateur sleuth solving murders. She has an antique store supplied uh, at garage sales. <laughs> Sammy must know about this, right? <laughs> Very possible. It stars uh it stars that criminal Lori Laughlin. <laughs> of course it does. So I think Searched that there's... and seized. Very is one of the episodes. The, Very ironic. The last episode, searched and seized. How do you how do you crest that? I don't think you do. Something something tells me we might be uh <laughs> covering an episode or so of this show at some point in the future. I think some of his, it his, sounds his amazing. Oeuvre, <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, back to the movie. I just got distracted seeing Garage Sale Mysteries, and I'm like, I have to <laughs> investigate what that is. Um, but yeah, so she goes in, talks to him, and he kind of lays out this this big uh, case that they're working on right now. Uh, he wants her to be a general counsel for this company, Strauss, which is a German steel company, and they want her to win this case and overturn an injunction against the company that wants to build a, a mill in the town. And I, I know I said this in our little group chat as we were watching it, but this feels like the beginning of every Belinda Blinked <laughs> book. Uh, it does. <laughs> I mean, my dad wrote a porno stands. We'll know what I mean. It, <laughs> it just like the whole like, oh, <laughs> they're a German manufacturing company. It felt very <laughs> like they're our number one competitor in Europe. Steals pots and pans. Anyway, if the, yeah. If this were a different, if this were a different type of movie, then it feels like she would. If it was meet, a different channel for sure. <laughs> yes, but it feels like she would meet a Bill at like working at Strauss. Like it would be some guy that she had to talk to at the company, and then you know mm. would find out he's an evil industrialist or something, even though she's <laughs> falling for him. Um, and why they, is she falling for him again? I I, I I forgot why. It's unclear why that happens. I think she just sort of gets into the habit of it very quickly. Like she basically starts to like love this family in about three weeks. I would say it doesn't even take that long because it's like the next day that she's, you know, talking to Amy and she's like, oh, you know, mommy something. And she says she calls herself mommy. And then she has this moment of like, oh, I'm a mommy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pheromones. She, it, you know, yeah. they they seal the deal, which is rare for a Hallmark movie in the middle of the movie. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's I think it's pheromones, and it, and she approaches everything as goal oriented. So when she <laughs> learns from Gina that she has to learn something, and there's a there's a goal, and so she can just proceed. It's also <laughs> yeah. funny that she she does she does very quickly like kind of take to Amy, but she also kind of quickly forgets that she has Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Jake. <laughs> um so and they basically tell her that if she overturns this injunction and lets them build this uh this plant in town that they'll make her a partner. Um and <laughs> I her think sister it, is like how dare you? Yes. <laughs> this is well, a like real how dare you do this thing. thing? Like I didn't know about it until like 5 minutes ago. I don't know. It's I, weird I, that she doesn't know that like it sounds like she doesn't talk to her sister that much because she I feel like her sister if she really cared about this plant being built in the park near their town would have said something to her and then she would at least have some knowledge of this thing happening yeah like hey maybe some legal advice or something <laughs> yes <laughs> I really um, I really like how heavy they they load the the legalese at the beginning. You know, when she's talking to herself and recording her notes or when she's on the phone walking into the big uh, conglomerate building in downtown San Fran and all this kind of stuff. And then, spoiler alert, when we have a uh, court scene later on, it's it's the least legal proceeding <laughs> <laughs> I've Amazing. ever seen in my like, life. Like, you would get disbarred, honestly. <laughs> yeah, um... 
So she basically, you know, she's a real asshole, as we've already established, because she wants all of her, her legal team to work through the through Thanksgiving because the big case is on Friday, which doesn't make... I don't think that that's a thing that happens. Do they... Do court... Are courts open on Good Friday? Well, well, here, on Good Friday? <laughs> Black no, Friday. No, Jesus died that day. Oh, here we go. <laughs> A Black are Friday is Good Friday, right? Rich white men. Um, so I, I doubt they do anything they don't want to do, including uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus died and became a turkey. <laughs> oh, I read that part of the Bible. That's the one <laughs> passage. The Three days later, local they... <laughs> courts say Black Friday may affect the hours of the courts. Okay, so there you go. Probably not open. <laughs> I mean, um, it's important day. I mean, they could have just us. said it. They could have just said it's the Monday after, which would have had the same impact. Like, oh, we still have to work on Friday. You know, you still have to, you know, do do a bunch of work over the Thanksgiving holidays to get ready for Monday. But like, it's not the day after. Also, I'm just uh, embarrassed that I called it Good Friday. You know how I know she's not a real lawyer? <laughs> she didn't golf once. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, she calls her sister and, you know, cancels the plans. And then this is when, you know, she mentions the, the whole factory wanting to tear down the park and, and, um, where, where the kids play and, uh, Gina shows up again here as she's, as she's leaving to go to her meeting with Strauss and, you know, uh, demands 15 minutes of her time. So she lets this random woman into her car uh to to head over to the uh to the Strauss company and also she starts... the fakest ever blackberry browsing <laughs> with this like this is a, a peeve of mine it's like when they're on their blackberries or their phones or whatever in movies and you can tell that they're like not really looking at anything it drives me nuts <laughs> In the movie we did uh, with with Sammy, they uh, one of the characters is searching for a pumpkin pie recipe, and she's using the popular search website Search. Oh, <laughs> a classic! Uh, Never and, goes out of style. Yeah, and Gina is asking her, like, you know, hey, this is a big moment for you, but who do you who do you celebrate with? Like, who is it? Who are you going to you know uh, celebrate this big win with? And who are you going to Claudia- celebrate celebration sex with? <laughs> that's right uh and, well, and- my husband was like <laughs> he said something about like um you know she must be a virgin because she doesn't have time for a man or something and i was like they don't take that long honestly <laughs> like it's a very low effort <laughs> endeavor for for women especially a successful you know fit woman like daphne zaniga See, see, I, you know, if she can let a strange woman into her, the backseat of her town car for 15 minutes, she's probably let some strange men in the backseat of her town car for 15 <laughs> yeah, minutes. Absolutely. Or, or, yeah, a four minute man. Nope. <laughs> she's, she's, she's on a schedule. It's probably in her Blackberry. <laughs> That's probably right. She has it scheduled in <laughs> for a good Friday because she doesn't celebrate holidays. Oh, it's you. scheduled for five minutes because one minute is cleanup. <laughs> uh, and she probably Claudia has a thinks- lot of paper towels in there. <laughs> uh claudia thinks this is a test you know she thinks that uh you know they're not gonna they're they're, the partners are testing her because what are they evil gods i don't know it's so (laughs) bizarre that she thinks that this is some sort of test like because later on he says you know if you join this firm we're your new family so you have to give up your old family like what are you talking about what are you, like is this an angel? Like what is this weird like firm? It's like the firm. It's the firm, a devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. Where are you <laughs> yes. gonna sleep when you get become partner? Um, but uh, god damn it! Like uh, she never understands. I had to like walk out of the room constantly because this is this is the character who gets the rules of what's going on shoved in her face constantly, and every <laughs> moment it happens, she goes and does the most embarrassing thing possible which is to talk <laughs> is to make the wrong assumptions i'm just like clearly something has happened i better go back to my old life and assume everything is the same yes not that i'm having some sort of like weird freak out and i don't understand what's going on but uh but yeah so she she says she doesn't need anything that she doesn't already have she doesn't need kids she doesn't need anything and which is she fine. tells the 
Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> By the way, Bitch, this is Hallmark. Yes, you do. <laughs> hey, I mean, the you last just don't movie, know it yet. The last movie we watched, they kissed in the middle of the movie, so anything goes now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this so was she, a bit spicier than than Hallmark's usual fare. Oh yeah, for sure. They they uh you know they they have regular sex. This is a, a happily married couple here. <laughs> I, um, I kind of lost it when the brother in law, uh, Jen's husband. Jen's husband. She does, and he had one mm. line, and it's like, ooh, someone's getting doof. lucky tonight. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I, you could hear a pin drop. <laughs> Uh, That's what and, she calls it. <laughs> uh, Jody she tells visibly the, wa- moved back from the mic when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> she tells the car to stop, and it abruptly stops, and she hits her head. And when she sits back this up, sucks. She's, every time they does that happens the whole two yeah, times. She, she's in uh, different clothing, and the car drops her off at the house and speeds away. And um. She goes up to the uh, goes up to the door to try to figure out what's going on, and a man comes out, Bill, the man we saw earlier in the coffee shop, and he hands her a child and <laughs> says, uh, "You know, oh, thank goodness you're here." And then he runs off to work, and it's weird because, like, where did he think she was? What time yeah. is it? Because later on in this same sequence, the kids are like, "What's for dinner?" And you're like, <laughs> isn't it the morning? Um. And they never explain and, which one was her stepson. <laughs> uh, and they, they, of course, keep calling her mother, and she's kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, and this is when we meet Jake and Amy. Uh, Amy needs to have her diaper changed, which she sets Jake about doing which on the <laughs> middle of the floor. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> You know, as 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 a mom, uh, you know her her attempt at momming at the beginning was pretty true to life. So I kind of <laughs> realized, you know, just hand the kids food, ask the siblings to do the chores. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, a more experienced mom does the same damn thing. So we're all just inner lawyers <laughs> that don't understand the reality we got zapped into. Well, I am putting that on my business cards, on my <laughs> giant business card. <laughs> if she's a fairy godmother. And her method is to smash your head against something. I want to. I want to replay Cinderella. <laughs> she just doesn't like Claudia. That's all. <laughs> I want. I want to redo Cinderella where they're out at the fountain, out on the castle grounds, and the fairy godmother for Cinderella just smashes her head against the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> and then she step. She leans back and she's got her beautiful dress on. <laughs> um, or and comfortable shoes. <laughs> that was. The, that's and, a big thing. Is that her her hair changes slightly and she gets more comfortable clothes. Yeah. Yeah, because at the end when she's back in her business attire, you can tell she's like not she's not doing so great on those heels. (laughs) Christian, the boutons, nice touch. Yeah, I I actually put in my notes, you know, they had to show that the red bottoms on the shoes. So we'd know. It's a Hallmark movie. So that's the only red bottom we do see. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there's a there's a pretty I guess traumatic moment here where she tells the kids she doesn't want to be their mother in front of them <laughs> where they where they listen with their ears and they understand even though they're only seven and three yeah um, you don't and... want to be her mom anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they decide to go try to find uh, dad's office even though she doesn't know where it is and the kids don't either of course. Um, this is the best scene in the movie where Amy gets into the, the car seat and wants to do it all by herself um, <laughs> and tells her to hold her gummies. And it's uh, it's very cute. Uh, and she decides here, like you like you mentioned, Skinner, that she's just going to go back to her office. Um, so So her office, as we've established, is in San Francisco. And they live in the suburbs somewhere, mm. which is probably pretty far from the city. So she navigated insane San Francisco traffic to yeah, get to this place. Yeah, but she has a minivan now. <laughs> yeah. That she makes like, all she's the so, She's so besmirched or before. Yeah. I'm going to guess, based on, her, you know, it starts with her not knowing her husband's office or the name of the company, but she can manage to find Jake's school later on. <laughs> uh, and the, you know, the... 
community center and all this kind of stuff. The park, you know, which is under intimate threat by Schoss, Sloss. Strauss. The Germans. Um, Schloss sausage. Which is never named anything other than the park. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet she had a program GPS. That's how I kind of bridged the plot gap in oh, my mind. Oh, maybe so, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. On her um, Blackberry. Yeah, her Blackberry. <laughs> she found it online on search.com. Uh, and uh, she goes in. Doorman doesn't recognize her, of course, but he lets her go up because Jake says he has to use the bathroom. Uh, and she sees that her assistant, when she was a lawyer, is now a lawyer herself. Uh, and she just gets discouraged and yeah. le- leaves. Her sort of protege. Yes. Right. So yeah. imminently, we, right away, we see that everybody else around her in the law firm fared better without her presence there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... The only person that is seems to be nice to her is the lady with the kid that she was mean to in the meeting earlier. Who yeah. never who never gets her great moment. Nothing ever better happens for her. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, well, she nice, just like, Becca. Yeah. Well, the nice thing for Bex is that in this reality things are better for her, my girl Bex. But uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this reality didn't happen, so she never gets that promotion. And then her boss get, basically probably gets herself fired, so she probably gets, goes down with the ship. <laughs> it's great. This For actress Becky. actually gets a lot of uh, traction with me because she was uh, in some of my favorite episodes of Fringe. So she has a great oh. name, Pascal Hutton. Mm-hmm. That, that is a top to... actress name. Is, is she, she Lauren Hutton's daughter Hutton? or anything? Timothy, Lauren, anybody? Uh, IMDb doesn't say, so who knows? Oh, she's from Canada. They're <laughs> all from BC, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Brian loves it when I do my Canadian accent at Canadians when we're in Canada. It was the worst of my life is when we went to a McDonald's and she did the enti- her entire order in a Nova Scotian accent. I thought they wouldn't notice. I honestly thought and I was good. I was not. I, I said, I'd like a quarter pounder um, and some fries. They're nice, so they didn't say anything. Well, I died inside. <laughs> and then I ate to McDonald's. <laughs> was it, I mean, was it, a, was it accurate though? Like... I mean, the fact that I can hear it means it's not accurate. It doesn't sound like someone talking to me. <laughs> yeah, I've had that reaction when my husband tries to do a southern accent. Oh, I have to make him do that. It's like when he says uh, lawyer, like Josh, lawyer. Shut up. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's come up yet. I'm the host of this show. I can end it right now. <laughs> Oh, go to a different reality where you have different go. See when, when Brian said that you could hear a pin drop, uh, I thought he was saying pan. <laughs> I said that. Oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry, Bo. That's okay. I'll go to a different. Like I said, I'm the my... last person that can talk about anyone else's speaking voice. I'm going to go to a different reality where I speak better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. She's driving home, uh, you know, bummed out and discouraged. She sees Gina on a cool little moped <laughs> riding around. <laughs> uh, and Gina, this is where she tells her, you know, you, I wanted you to examine your life, find some balance, see what you didn't have, and try to find a way to, to make it work in your real life. Um, which is a weird thing. Like, I, I guess she wants to show her so far removed from what she has now so that when she goes back to her real life she tries to find that middle ground where it's not Mm. like purely just a stay-at-home mom but like where she can have it all i guess yeah this movie is weirdly judgmental to both career women and stay-at-home moms (laughs) yes right you have to do it all you know the feminist mantra not um yeah women are charged with having to do it all and and, you know siding one way or the other Mm. not perfectly 50 50 is a is a Betrayal yeah. of your vagina. It's, it's just—it's weird to me that of all the people to to take this message to the masses on Hallmark, Faye Dunaway, <laughs> like per- famous perfectionist uh, who demands a lot of of everyone around her and is you know hugely um, wronged by male coworkers about mm. her uh, attitude because she actually cared. Uh, is wearing this hat and this wig and doing this role in this movie with this message? Well, that's, that's that what must be a friend. 
her her agent told her, you know, this is a, you know, this is kind of a counter message to what you normally do, Faye. And she goes, yeah, but that hat. <laughs> well, that hat, though. Maybe they hired the hat and the hat came with her. <laughs> <laughs> what is Gina doing in like when she's not dealing with her? Because she's obviously magic in some way, but is she just riding around town in this little moped? And sending yeah, I, mail. I love to think so. Who is, she, who is she sending mail to, do you think? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Well, she does, say, she does say this is a very busy time of year for her. So is she doing this to other people as well? It's See, her last okay. Name, Claus. Look, when this movie, like when we got to this part of the movie, I turned to my husband and I was like, I bet she did the same thing to Bill. And that's why he like comes into the coffee shop and's like, hey, <laughs> trying to talk to her. I was like, I bet she's already done this to him. And oh, she's maybe. done that to Turns everybody out- in in uh, San Francisco, like one at a time. So they're all yeah. out of sync a little bit. Like <laughs> Becca had her Becca Becca's overlapped with uh, with Claudia's because Becca had a great life, <laughs> and now she doesn't. But <laughs> she's just going you, around. Yeah, you can tell up. she transitioned from good to evil because uh, alternate reality Becca wears her hair up. <laughs> the hair is very important in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Daphne on the uh, the dinner date when she finally falls in love with Bill for reasons I cannot figure out. Oh her my God, is, that hair. Her hair is powerful. It's huge. <laughs> it's weird. Like it's, it, it, it gets, it swells. You keep talking about it. We were watching it and you kept talking about the size of Daphne's hair. And I said, it's, well, she does have that gigantic uh, hair dryer that Joan C3PO carries around for her. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good movie. Very funny. Uh, doesn't, doesn't age very well. Has the word balls in it. And there's a Mr. Coffee and Mr. Radar joke. That was very funny. You know who never gets closure in this movie is that barista. I wanted him to punch her so hard. <laughs> or at least, like, not open the door for her. Or Which have is... her put coins in the tip jar. Something. Isn't yeah. she sort of nice to him at the end? Maybe she could have said, like, I got she a tip smiles. for you. Get a better job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So she goes to see her sister, um, and her sister is like, you know, oh, we see each other every day, and she's kind of, you know, put off by that because she hasn't seen. She's her shocked by that even more sometimes. than her own kids. <laughs> um, and I thought this was weird that her sister also has a portrait of Claudia and Bill at their wedding on her mantle. Yeah, not even them together as like two couples. It's just the wedding portrait. I'm like, why does she have that? The baby bumps, the side by side back to back baby bumps, which yeah. I assume Harper and er, were Harper and Jack, mm. Harper being Jen and and uh, you're getting lucky you tonight. Much son. closer attention than I did. I didn't realize I had no idea her kids have names. I was in the same room <laughs> as you. <laughs> it's kind of uh, like real life, actually. Pretty much, <laughs> yo, you. You know, we're going to Thanksgiving this year, and Buddy will be there, and fella, and <laughs> what's her face? That other guy there. <laughs> And uh, yeah. Brian. <laughs> well, that name you can remember. Um, and it turns out it's only November 3rd. Uh, so she's been sent back in time. Uh, you know, it's not the Thanksgiving. So she's got uh, she's got time to make it all work. It's very much like a Christmas carol. You know, it's not too late. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes home, goes to bed. And this is the aforementioned scene where uh, Bill shows up and uh, tries to uh, initiate some some late night sex, but she is not <laughs> into that Having yet, it. which is understandable. Um, and she, I, <laughs> I did find this pretty funny. She's like, uh, "Oh, you're from Sunrise Coffee," and he's like, "Well, I'll be whoever you want me to be." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Well, he's game." So yeah, <laughs> yeah. She open. she flinched b- between that scene where you you know he wants a dick in because he's got that you know, lopsided smile. <laughs> he's got his uh, button up dress shirt still on but untucked, with his boxers though. untucked yeah yeah. and you know it's up for wild times <laughs> but but that is how they met because later they have with that with no pants on? <laughs> no I'm saying it's Sunrise Coffee they like when he he seems really game for it like he's caught off guard by her saying that but then later when she which I, I got a genuine laugh out of when she's like how did we meet when they're on their date um it, he says, you know, oh, we, I went in, we went into this, this coffee shop and I met you there. And it's like, so he, like, she wants to role play as their first meeting, I guess. <laughs> um, 
And she, you know, feigns that she's still angry about whatever they argued about in the morning. Uh, and so she makes him sleep on the couch. Uh, and it turns out it's his, his birthday the next day. Uh, and they get him a plunge router, which he's very <laughs> excited about. Um, I was like, yep, that's a word I've heard before. I, I didn't know what that was. I mean, I know what a router <laughs> is, but I didn't know what a plunge router was. I thought it was some sort of, uh, like, garbage disposal thing. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looked like one. Um, it's part and, of the carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows that there's a surprise party, uh, but she doesn't know any details, of course. So... Um, well, she knows she's expected to make one of her famous cakes. Yes, she is expected to do that. She does go shopping for a bunch of stuff and almost lets Amy get killed in a parking lot. <laughs> and she knows oh, what yeah, to shop for. Oh, yeah, this is the mommy for. scene. Uh, yeah, she knows what to shop for. She just, I guess, just figures it out. Maybe there was a list in her Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> um. And I did like here where she's make she makes the cake and it's a, she does a terrible job of frosting it. But her sister comes in and says, "Oh, you let Amy frost the cake. It, he's gonna love that." <laughs> Which was a, a nice touch, I thought. Yeah. Um, and they uh, they go out to the park so she can kind of see what what is um, you know what is going to be potentially lost if Strauss gets a gets their factory put in there um the again, park yeah yeah you can tell park. she's never been to a park before because she's like wow <laughs> this is beautiful it's like yeah it's like trees and stuff you live in san francisco you just cross the bridge and see some of the like the the oldest trees in america <laughs> um and uh i did like again amy is the best character because there's a scene where she just tries to throw her stroller down a ravine <laughs> <laughs> which I was, <laughs> I loved. Um, and uh, yeah, so they have the surprise party for Bill. Uh, Claudia gets uh, a little drunk and just says awkward shit. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was very awkward. She was like, oh, you made this <laughs> like for the Cringe. table. <laughs> and uh, she, you know, of course, can't remember uh, all the details of their life because she doesn't know these people. Um and she feels like she, she sort of has an epiphany here where she's like, well, if I can if I can get the family on the right track, because she finds out about Bill getting passed over for a promotion or whatever. And she says, if I can if I can get all the family on the right track, I can get Amy potty trained and I can help Jake get good grades and I can help Bill get a promotion. Then I can fix their family and I can go back to my real life. Um, and. You know, that, that kind of sets her up for the rest of the movie of these things that she's trying to do until she realizes that they're not important. Well, she has two epiphanies in this moment. The other one was uh, Bill might be expecting birthday sex. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They and said S-E-X in the Hallmark movie. was he? <laughs> he was, boy, yeah. howdy. He, <laughs> yeah. He wants that plunger router to get, to get some work. <laughs> Right? Sleep, sleeping on the couch the night before is just edging. Yeah, he's just going to route her with his plunger. <laughs> oh, God. <Lord. laughs> I can keep on going. <laughs> um, and she turns him down, of course, uh, because she's not uh, not interested in that just yet. It will come, but it uh, and she will too. You but can kind of see she, she has Jesus like a Christ, little Josh. side. She it gives him a come. little side glance of, of interest. After he rolls over and goes to sleep, and then she's like, nah. <laughs> uh, she finds out here uh, the, in the next day that uh, she's actually the assistant coach um, for uh, Jake's soccer team, which she doesn't really do much. <laughs> she just sort of sits on the side. True to form. That's exactly <laughs> what that job is. <laughs> I mean, what what exactly? Like, I, I get it. These are kids, so you're not expecting them to be doing anything amazing but they're just running up and kicking <laughs> kicking a ball into a net and you know cheering so i mean it's totally fine but she's maybe just your sort kid of... is josh but my kid's a future superstar <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right this is when yeah, she, she thinks uh... he's gonna get into harvard on athletics because he's good <laughs> at soccer they keep setting up her having like in-town frenemies and then they mm. go away and oh Lindsay i think there was something here, to is, that is... yeah 
What they could yeah, have threaded that- here, based on the later court scene, is she had a conversation with the main soccer coach and talked about health issues. But no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all my all these soccer kids are so healthy. No one's sick. <laughs> no For German steel is making them sick. They're going to Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she meets yeah. Uh, another mom here who is who is a very uh very much, uh, you know, uh, all about her kid being in this private preschool, um, and you know, kind of showing off. And and this th- this woman is very much set up. They didn't have this in 2010, but she's very much one of those Insta moms. Like she has an Instagram page where she, you know, talks about how difficult it is being a mother, and uh, mm. you know, all the quirky things her kids do. But then also monetizes it and has a lot of ads for various companies. <laughs> Yep, never shows us her hydro flask. That's how you also know it's 2010. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, this is when Claudia decides she's going to lay out a plan for the whole family to get ahead. Uh, she she gives them this bound <laughs> book that she's made with uh, with this layout. I don't know what she expects Amy to do with that except color in it, but she gives her one anyway. Um, yeah, I was and- like... She's three. She doesn't know how to read yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> they better have M&Ms. That's how you bride kids to uh, potty train. Yeah, they pee on them. <laughs> pee on the what? M&Ms? That's how they aim. That's Cheerios, oh. bro. No. What am I doing? <laughs> I better get rid of all these M&Ms. This must be a Canadian thing. <laughs> <laughs> we use Smarties up there. What was you know, cuter, Amy, Amy pushing the, the cart in the ravine or Amy standing on the counter in the bathroom? <laughs> I mean, uh, I think her throwing the how thing in the ravine. How did she get up there? I don't know. <laughs> how did she get on the How did she get on the sink? <laughs> I was going to say about the uh, the aiming thing. There is uh, in I think it's in New York. I don't know if they're still there. Um, you but... can see on people dressed up as the uh, M and M's. <laughs> No, oh, there, <laughs> there is, uh, there are urinals in a, in the JFK airport, um, in, uh, terminal four, apparently I found an article about it from 2009. Um, and it, there is a drawing of a fly in the urinal and, um, it's, I, I heard that it was. Uh, that it was like it was some it was some artist or something who decided to do it because it would help people uh, it will help people aim and and uh, make sure that they didn't like you know piss all over the place but <laughs> apparently it's been Fly around like since a zipper? 18 <laughs> no like a, a bug um, bzz, bzz. Yes, okay. because apparently there in the 1890s they even had little bees apparently in uh, in uh, toilet bowls for helping guys aim. Oh, oh that's why well. there's that Cockney thing that says that's an old bee pisser. <laughs> Maybe so. That, that <laughs> yeah. might and also, be why. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And also, I was gonna say whatever it makes the cleaning stupid. And they're right. <laughs> whatever makes the cleaning crews uh, life easier is okay with me. Yeah, based th- on the evidence. That I've seen through in my life, uh, most guys who I don't see pissing it must be pissing on the floor, and I don't know why. <laughs> yes. There's flies down there <laughs> on the subway in New York. I mean, I have pissed in one of these uh, these urinals with the fly, and I was very freaked out by it when I saw it because I thought it was real for a second. <laughs> I was it's like, not "Why is there a fly? <laughs> Drown, motherfucker!" <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, so there is a company called Urinal Fly uh, that makes uh, toilet stickers of flies that you can just apply to any random urinal that you want. Oh, uh, wow. And and claims to keep bathrooms up to 85% cleaner. People are stupid. That's what that proves. But also, they need to market this and get some co-marketing. Like, put, like, NFL player football faces... On there, so you can pee on like the opposing players, like say I don't know Aaron Rodgers, right? Just piss all over his face, right? It it could work with the pandemic. I mean, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers getting pissed on was is what's going to cure his COVID. So it's homeopathic, baby. Well, I've seen his beard; it did look kind of uh, quick dried. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so she uh, 
She lays out this plan. Bill is kind of upset about it because it means there'll be less time for them to spend together as a family, but they want to do it. He means in the sack. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 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 Because it will make her happy. Um, So she... She helps Jake with math uh, and, and you know, helps him out there. She's trying to help uh, Amy uh, potty train. Uh, she, gives, uh, she gives Bill a book on, um, you know, business for dummies or something. Well, I don't remember what, the, what it was. But climbing, climbing the, the corporate, corporate ladder. ladder. That's it. For okay. dummies. Yes. Um, she and... drew a fly on the ladder so he knows where to go. Yep. He, kn- <laughs> yep, he knows who to piss on to go on his way up. Uh, she checks her old uh, firm's website and sees that Becca made partner. So of course she oh, freaks God out about it. that. <laughs> that um, was my job. That, yeah, that bitch didn't know about the Supreme both. Court ruling as it hit the Court of Appeals. God damn it! <laughs> uh, she she spots uh, Gina out mailing letters um, <laughs> for some reason. And uh, she she tells her she wants to go back now, but Gina's like, well, no, you're not ready yet. You still have more to do here. Um, and this is when she has this, like, this conversation with Bill where she sort of accuses him of not letting her be a lawyer. And he's like, well, it was your decision. You didn't want to leave the kids, so you mm. chose not to do it. Um, and... And people make these weird, like, statements. Like, like she says here, you guys were probably better off without me. And it's like, what does that mean? Because <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have any sort of knowledge of what it's like without you. So. Yeah. And he's like, you're probably right. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a weird conversation. Yep, ever since she didn't make that big breakfast in the morning, no pancakes, she's been on the shit list. <laughs> yeah, no birthday sex, some, no, no birthday at some pancakes. Point, like, maybe Bill would go to Gina and her unnamed husband, who I'm sure has a name. You mean Jen? Oh, it's, right, Jen. Would you go see <laughs> too, Jen? Many close, too many close <laughs> names here because Jen is played by an actress named Gina Holden, so that's very confusing. Holding the place there. Uh, but imagine, like, Maybe like going to like his sister in law, like, hey, hasn't hasn't our my wife, your sister, been acting a bit off lately? Like, right? She keeps saying things like she doesn't remember where we met, <laughs> and <laughs> or she, telling the kids she doesn't want to be their mother. Right. I think she's getting poisoned by Schloss. <laughs> <laughs> it's already happening. Mm. She's getting some Schloss in the side. She sure is. <laughs> He he really for, considering that she won't she she physically moves away from him every time she she go, he goes in for a kiss. Where is the are you cheating on me moment in this movie? Right. Yeah, that never it, it, it would happen. Yeah, that never comes up, and it is. I wish this movie was more grounded with this elfin, that <laughs> magic woman who picks the exact moment of your perfect weakness and then rips your life apart <laughs> right no safe uh, sex talk you know I, i've been lawyering in san francisco i need my uh six month std checkup <laughs> <laughs> she uh she decides that she's gonna she's gonna make this this lawyer thing happen she goes into the city uh to her old office and kind of uh just bullies her way into uh, a yeah, meeting she works somewhere else <laughs> with John Skinton. And uh, he's kind of dismissive of her at first. He's like, I don't do interviews, but she wows him with her with her law knowledge. Um, yeah. And uh, this is when he says that, you know, if she if she takes this job, it's 24 seven and they will be her new family. And she'll need to put her old one aside, um, which is ridiculous. And. I, I I think we're supposed to wonder whether or not she takes it. I guess, like, or because right. she gets a call later about him wanting to offer her, uh, you know, a, a position, but then she never. I, I guess she never just never calls him back. Um, and that must be so weird for him. <laughs> this woman came <laughs> yeah. out of nowhere, barged into his office, demanded an interview, wowed him. He calls her back, and she does. Like, he must think like. As much as I, it, it it drove me crazy when she said the word punked and I was thrown back in time to when people said the word punked, 
like he would he would have to imagine like why is, did I wrong this woman in some other <laughs> in some case in the past that she's completely fucking with me? And and when <laughs> when he's sitting on the uh, I don't know if it's a criminal case, probably not. So on the plaintiff side, uh, representing Schloss, and she's she's that attorney um, representing the the other side. There's no moment of I recognize you. <laughs> yes. There's no <laughs> you. Yeah, that would have been interesting if he'd be like, "Oh, you were you were trying to." She should be. She, this should be thrown out because she came in and tried to get a bunch of information or something from me, like you know, tried to trick me into giving up things or whatever. Um, but your hair's yeah. bigger and you smell like ointment. <laughs> <laughs> smell like the suburbs, baby. Uh, and she decides here after she leaves the interview and sees a, a family playing together that actually this family thing is better for her. So. She, you know, apologizes to her sister and, you know, tells Bill to to wait on his promotion. It's not as important. And uh, she wants to help save the park. Um, and, and he uh, can make all of his, his furniture. Yes, that's what They that's can turn that is. into a business. Let's take oh this thing you God. love doing and, and make it. Yeah, monetize work. it. <laughs> yeah. When, when, she, when he shows her the chair that looks just like oh my a God. chair. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she's like, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Hey, it's that not... was the most sexual tension in the in the show, and she's stroking the the finish on that thing. Yeah. I mean the wood was nice, but I mean it, it was a fly changing, weird. like a fly on an ocean. Have you sat old. on it? <laughs> Have you? Did you see how I've thick on that it. seat was? <laughs> Uh, they, they finally go, uh, she, she comes up with a bunch of, uh, stuff to help them come up with a good argument for, for, uh, fighting, uh, uh, Sloss and, and their lawyers. Um, and, uh, th- this is when Claudia and Bill go out on their dinner date, uh, and she kind of tries to get an, uh, you know, an understanding of how did they meet. Um, and they, they hit it off here. They go home and they, they have sex. It's great. Uh, yeah. and, and also, <laughs> fantastic. Bill Bill is jacked, man. He is a he's a he he's keeps a big himself dude. in shape. Like <laughs> he's also like nine feet tall. Yes, he's bigger he's, than her hair. He is a huge man, and <laughs> he's hitting them brand muffins at the coffee shop. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Um, and she decides that she's going to take on the case. Uh, which you just can. I mean, apparently you can get a, a JD uh, past the bar in yeah. the state. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, not practice. For as you know, I'm assuming and, for the length of Jack's paid, life there, a paid positions for some reason. I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, she kind of, she kind of, uh, we we put Jake back in the movie here, where she can tell him he's a good kid and that he knows how to do math now. Um, <laughs> I thought they just like said like oh, it's okay, you're gonna be a, you can be a C plus dude, maybe you can grow up to be like in law enforcement or something. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh they get all the files about the plant from uh from the firm and they start going through it a bunch of people show up to help um and they find a document that says the chemicals from an identical plant in another town uh, called summit made a bunch of kids really sick <laughs> so that's this all is they like the need monorail thing from simpsons yes. right away <laughs> <laughs> they, they found the smoking gun um, that that says, "Yeah, a bunch of kids got sick. Who cares?" <laughs> and uh, they they give everybody time off for Thanksgiving. Jake gets a B minus in math, and Amy finally poops in the potty. <laughs> so everything's going great. Right. Right. And again, this was a mom moment. She's she's redressed. You know, she's got her tights that she hates back on, and her her skirt I was like, down. Who and wiped I'm like, her butt. Because you yeah. know that kid did not wipe her own butt. You you know it. There's a schmear. There's a bagel schmear That's somewhere. That's all Jody would talk about when it happened. She's like, she just picked up that kid that she, she doesn't know she wiped or not. I'm like, did you, would you not have picked up Holly? And she's like, I wouldn't have liked to. <laughs> so you know what my job was back then. <laughs> uh, they have the the Thanksgiving pageant here. Uh not the most Ooh, <laughs> politically yeah. correct thing we've got going here with I a mean, bunch of white kids dressed up as Native Americans. Right, that they're calling them Indians. Yeah. Um, this, this is what should have told me that this was 2010, honestly, <laughs> was this yeah. scene. 
Well, it's quite quintessentially American. And we, we did, you know, um, we did one thing with those guys, right? Mm. Yes. And we're going to celebrate ourselves for the next 200 years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Was it weird for them filming this in Canada? <laughs> I mean, they, they filmed it in October and instead of, uh, you know, after the this this meal, the kids dressed as Native Canadians got taken to a separate school. And <laughs> oh, oh, oh. we are much we are no better. And it, it is embarrassing how we treated them. You gave there. them blackberries and with loaded with search dot com. So everything's all right. Hey, we gave everyone blackberries. We had the world blackberry. Real blackberries because this is Canada. <laughs> we own we own we own both. Uh the next day that it's Thanksgiving, they wake up, they uh she puts the turkey in, uh, obviously had a good night of sex with uh with Bill. Um and <laughs> all uh, that stuffing and uh flavor <laughs> right. Yes. Uh and then they smells like sage. As the as the Thanksgiving meal is cooking, they head out to play football. <laughs> I know. And they don't come like, home to a burned down house. Fire safety. Yeah. That's a- Americans are that good at cooking. <laughs> um, and uh, God, I was just thinking when you said Sage and Bill, how much Old Spice this guy smell like? <laughs> oh, so much. He's probably not. He's probably not putting on anything. He just smells like the wood that he's working with. He's got this right, like the varnish. Yes, yep. he's got this mm-hmm. like woodsy smell to him constantly. He smells like sawdust. Yes. <laughs> Who needs condoms when you have polyurethane? <laughs> right. <laughs> Josh is gonna have a nightmare for a week. <laughs> shellac. She got shellac good. good. <laughs> um, the dirtiest episode in a while. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> we can always count on you, Jody. Uh, <laughs> Claudia gives a toast at Thanksgiving, says she's full of love and it's great. And everything is wonderful. Um, she heads off to the uh, the trial. Um. And as she's on her way, uh, it turns out Gina is driving the car and yep. she says, it's time to go back to your real life. And, uh, you know, Claudia doesn't want to. She she has grown to to care about this fake family, these non-real people. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, she slams on the brakes again, hits her head, and she's back in her normal timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in her crisp little suit. Yeah, she she goes to back to the suburbs, um, to the house that she knew, and of course it is the it's the wrong house. The, right. Different... She could she could suspend disbelief that some lady with a with the index card could could throw <laughs> her around in different realities, but she always assumed that she could Google Maps it and and find the next one if she <laughs> yeah. just went to the address. Yeah. I mean, what does she think would happen if she goes there and then Bill opens the door? Like, he either is single with kids or he has a wife and then those kids are not hers. And so, like, what happens then? I mean, then it becomes a Lifetime movie where she tries to knock off the other wife and move in or on that family. Or it becomes, like, 13 going on 30 where she just goes back and changes everything. <laughs> Maybe. Um, she... She goes back to work and she finally involves Becca a bit more and she asks her to be the co-chair on the uh on the case. And um, then fucks her over. <laughs> <laughs> kinda. I mean, but it seems like Becca's okay with it at the end. Like she seems fine. Well, yeah, with she's what got her do. hair down, so yes. you know she's got a soul. She's still good. Um <laughs> <laughs> she ain't Murphy Brown in her hair, <laughs> right? <laughs> she she approaches uh, Skinton and says, you know, hey, that you did. We didn't disclose the harmful chemicals uh, and the kids and whatnot when to the other side. And he's like, ah, it doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> because I'm evil. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, might as well. He's, you know, John Skinton might as well be John Milton from from The Devil's <laughs> Advocate, uh, and. They, uh, she goes in and she kind of talks to the people who are during the case. She, um, is asking about how the plant will be, you know, if it's going to be identical to the one in Summit. And they're like, yep, it's exactly the same. Nothing's different about it at all. German uh, precision. It, <laughs> that's right. It brought jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> uh, so do bomb factories. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she she calls as a witness the coach from Summit, 
and basically she asks him how many kids have gotten sick since the plan opened the plan opened and he basically says all of them essentially <laughs> like Wouldn't every that be kid a has gotten story sick. unless they were paid off yeah like it seems like that would be something that more people would know about oh hey this company that put a plant in this other town uh, where all Especially the kids got white sick kids. yeah no it's all these uh, type a parents from other towns who kick their butts <laughs> in soccer and they're just like oh that's their excuse they're just saying they're sick because they keep losing games. Fake news. Uh, and, uh, of course, because of this this uh, damning testimony, um, the judge rules in favor of the townspeople. But hold on. She, she, said, she said how many people were, how many kids got sick before the steel mill came to town? And he's like, none. And I'm like, bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on that one. Kids are disease like, vectors. No. Yeah, no kid got sick ever. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> it was the pris- the most pristine town. We didn't even need a hospital. <laughs> Just the whole like I rule in favor of the townspeople. It's yeah. like wow. Not the city of blankety blank versus <laughs> yeah. loss. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, they don't even name this like township or wherever that they live. Like it's just outside of San Francisco, so they could have come up with a name. But it, it does. It's like Waverly Park. It's something or other yeah, because she tells that taxi right. some, some shit like that. You're right, yeah. Paisley Park. <laughs> um, she and- um, would have been disbarred for this. I'm I'm saying because she did not act in the best interest of her client. Yes. This was, she would have at least gotten some kind of hefty censure for this. Yeah. But, like, you know, maybe she doesn't give a shit. She's just ready to not be a lawyer anymore. Well, I mean, just, she does get you know, fired here, so I guess she's Pop okay out some it. babies. I thought she the only two options, after all. Yeah, That's she, what we all say. She yeah. gets uh, she gets let go essentially, and she says, "Well, I'll tell I'll tell them all about you not disclosing those documents." She's gonna take yeah, down like, the whole system. Do you think system. he gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. Um, but her sister is very proud of her, and Becca is very proud of what they did. Um, you know, siding with the townspeople of this tiny town outside of San Francisco. <laughs> Who's and, gonna give Al his donuts? That this is my question. Oh, that's right. Yeah, poor guy. Uh, well, you know, it's probably gonna be better for his health. True, true. Um, but he's not gonna get any brand muffins either. So you know, gross <laughs> brand muffins. Ugh. There's no benevolent white person controlling his health decisions. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so she goes to the coffee shop, to Sunrise Coffee, to wait for Bill because she just assumes that he's going to show up. And she waits there all day long. Who knows how much coffee she drinks. Um, and as she's leaving, uh, she realizes, oh, she forgot her, her phone. She runs back in, and there's Bill uh, getting a cup of coffee at like 8.30 at night, I guess. Um, and... She she asks if he'd like to maybe have dinner tomorrow, and he's like, no, I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> um, Creepy. Which is, I mean, you know, I don't know. It's not the, not the worst line in the world, but, you know, pretty... Uh, Comes he's pretty been strong. stalking her for, like, weeks. Yeah, that's true, because we have to assume that it's still the reality where, like, he, you know, he's noticed her, because obviously he has. So mm. it, He says so. But that was he in the he, other. That was a fake reality. I thought this one as well. She said like, "Oh, I was waiting for you." He's like, "I've been waiting. I've been watching oh, you." Oh, for, for, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't mm-hmm. watching her for weeks. And she's got the horniest eyes on for in this thing. Or oh, she had a lot of coffee. But no, for <laughs> not for baby making. No. For no, because those those kids are genetic. You know, crapshoot. There's like a one in a million <laughs> chance of making them kids again. Plus, she looks forty nine. Well, she <laughs> yeah. literally is forty nine. Is she? She's not. She's not getting anywhere without the miracles of modern science. <laughs> uh, and of course, or she they... could find a magic thing uh, woman and tell her, like, can you just fucking give me my two kids back? This reality. <laughs> and Gina pulls two feathers from her hat, turns them into babies. <laughs> <laughs> and as they walk off together. Uh, Gina is standing there on the street watching and, uh, you know, gives a little wry smile and then heads off to ruin someone else's life. 
touched by an angel with Roma Downey. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't lean more on the, the religious thing. It's something that Skinner and I talked about in the mini episode, but like we expected it to be more religious themed and it's not really like they don't really well, lean into her being like an angel or something like that, which is what I fully expected. Well, I think Hallmark had, you know, probably about this time or a little sooner started to be a little more careful about the more like overt religious messaging in its movies. Like it's still there. It's definitely still like still part of their brand. But it's not so much like in your face, like you know. True. Christmas is a is not about Jesus and all of that. It's about Christmas, if in and Hallmark Land. They did do a nod to Dickens. Gina refers to herself or explains the situation to Claudia mm. as kind of like the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, one great plot should hearken itself to another great plot. <laughs> sure. I mean, Dickens didn't have the balls to create a character who is adorable and that we love like Tiny Tim and then tell us he's never born. <laughs> he will never exist. You know who had Dickens and balls? Bill. <laughs> His plunger router? His plunger router. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, get, into her, get into her brand muffin. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that is a family Thanksgiving. Uh, Smells so like chia <laughs> It was a... <laughs> Spirited discussion as I knew it would be, <laughs> um, and we were we were so happy to have uh, have both Bo North and Jody Skinner join us uh, for this episode. Um, Aww, it's so it it's so lovely delight. to be talking to you both. Uh, just this episode comes out on the Monday before Thanksgiving, just mere days before we will be together. Um, it's it's so exciting. It's it's literally like. This this is my family Thanksgiving. Like honestly, Aww. it's going to be so great to be in the same place with all of you. And uh, <laughs> and I, I've like as I've been thinking about it, as I've been counting down the weeks, it's like, oh, this it it just feels good. So I'm I'm very yeah. excited to be able to talk about this this silly movie with you all, but also to to see you all in person uh, very soon. Oh, and and Skinner's going to be there too. It's great. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that one. He's he's on pans and needles. <laughs> um the, uh, but uh before we wrap it up here uh Bo North do you have anything that you'd like to promote? Oh uh, yeah actually I do. I have a show as you said with a friend of the show Megan Sunday. We to have a show called Let's Get Weirding. We talk about Dune, we're reading it chapter by chapter. We are like Almost, we're in the last third of Children of Dune right now, so God Emperor is approaching. And uh, that's really fun and cool, and you should check it out. We also, I also write for thespool.net. I write about film and television, and you can find it all there. And uh, just to just to add to that, obviously you uh, you also have uh, a show. I know it's on a bit of hiatus right now, but excessively diverted with our previous guest Sammy C. So go back to the back mm -hmm. catalog, listen to those episodes. Uh, yeah, we've Skinner actually kind been of on been a few. Uh, playing around with the thought of uh, re-recording some of those uh, old episodes where you know we didn't quite have the sound figured out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Things like that, but also just to revisit some of those movies. Um, awesome. So maybe stay tuned for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, Jody, do you have anything you'd like to promote? Um, my daughter is potty trained. <laughs> <laughs> I should so hope there's so. That. I'm not really an internet person, but if you ever need your podcast to move from PG-13 to, you know, NC-17 or R... I'm down. I will also say that Jody has done some voice work for our podcast, and she's an excellent voiceover artist. She is. I, I can attest to that as well. She's done some some stuff for us as well, and it's uh, it's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, a Butter, big hit. Butterfly Kisses is a great is a hit podcast that she was has been. <laughs> That's <has> right. <laughs> Um, but I think that that is going to do it uh, for this episode. Uh, we hope everyone out there who uh, celebrates uh, Thanksgiving uh, has has a nice one. Uh, enjoy the time off from work. Hopefully enjoy the time with your friends and your family. 
mm-hmm. and hope it's a hope it's a good day. Um, and uh, enjoy that Good Friday as well that's coming up. <laughs> Save some for me. <laughs> Save some for Jesus because <laughs> he's about to die. <laughs> oh, but until until next time, I've been Josh. I'm I've been Jody. I've been Bo. And I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> and we predict you'll join us next time. If you like the show, subscribe, rate, and review us over at Apple Podcasts. We're on Twitter and Instagram at PredictoCast, and you can find our entire back catalog at PredictoCast.com. Our theme music is by Kyle Sledge. Find more of his work at SoundCloud.com slash Geist Music. As always, thanks for listening.